Husband. Yes, wife? Let's read the Bible. But we're atheists. Why would we want to do such a thing? Because we live in small town USA and everyone around us quotes this thing extensively and we have no idea how to respond? That's true. Neither of us grew up with religion, yet Christianity is playing a huge part in our country's politics. We're not scholars or academics, so sacrilegious discourse is our first take reaction. This feed houses our reading of the book of Exodus, and each subsequent book will get its own separate feed too. Why are we separating each book? Not all podcast platforms allow access to older episodes. This will ensure our listeners don't lose access to any of our previously released material. You can find our most recent episodes on our main channel, Sacrilegious Discourse. That's right. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey you, welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. I'm wife. And together we're reading the Bible. Starting with Genesis and eventually ending with Revelations, we're working through every book and offering our atheist two cents. Or shekels. Yeah, those. We're asking questions and pointing out all the nonsense. We aren't academics or scholars. Nope. In fact, when it comes to religion, we really don't know anything at all. What we've learned so far is that God's a dick. Oh, he really is, isn't he? If you're interested in how we reached this startling conclusion, maybe start from episode one. Otherwise, jump in anywhere. It's all good. Yep. Husband. Yeah, wife. Do you remember what happened last time? No, because like today is the day that we were supposed to have this already ready and we're doing it late. So we're behind, which means we haven't talked about the Bible for like two weeks. Oh, no. Okay. That's okay. It was the Ten Commandments. But um, the reason that I'm trying not to laugh is because... <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Um, it ended with... And um, when you build a worshipy thing to me, um, don't build stairs because then you have to go up the oh, stairs. Oh, yeah, they're people, looking up people's skirts and shit. People might see that you need undies. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I forgot all about that. Yep. 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 So it was, yeah, just the Ten Commandments plus undies. I mean, I got to think about this, but I think almost every church I've ever seen has stairs. Yeah. So doesn't that kind of go against God? It really does. And he had a very specific... He didn't just say don't do it. He had a very solid reason. Right. Like, this is the Ten Commandments portion, you know? Yeah. Like, this is like... Not yeah. not that that was one of the Ten Commandments, but it was like in there as like one of the and it was things like, you don't do. It was like, here's the Ten Commandments and oh, by the by. Right. It was like a plus one. Was it? Or was it part of the Ten Commandments? Um, I think it was like part of the you gotta worship me. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But here's how and don't do this. Right, right. This was the instructions on how to worship. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, I mean, all these people that are like the Ten Commandments, they're where it's at. They're doing it wrong. They are. They're totally we doing it wrong. We should just walk by every church with stairs and be like, sacrilegious. Yeah, yeah. And and we should be like, people are looking up your dress, Heretic. ma'am. Heretic. Ma'am, people are looking up your dress and they could see that you're not wearing undies. God said so. God said so. It's in the Bible. I can show you the passage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that happened. All right, so what are we doing today? Today we are doing Exodus chapters 21 and 22. Awesome. Well, let's go find out what happens in God world today. Woohoo! Hey, wife. Yes, husband. Did you know that we are now on Patreon? Um, yes, because you told me, but also, no, tell me more. <laughs> so we're on Patreon now. Are we? We are. And our supporters can go there and support us. And we have multiple levels all the way up to You Killed God. That sounds really drastic and escalated quickly-ish. Well, no, there's multiple levels before there. So it, es- it escalates on a sliding scale of, you know, cheap to, to not cheap. Oh. But, you know, we can definitely use any amount. So, like, any support is always appreciated. So, what exactly is Patreon? It's a place where you can show your support for our podcast. And Just our podcast? Any podcast or any <laughs> performer. 
but you know we're the ones that you know you're listening to right now so maybe you should uh, you know support us that'd be awesome that would be awesome but we love you anyway so all you gotta do is go to Patreon look up Sacrilegious Discourse it's actually patreon.com forward slash Sacrilegious Discourse is our actual main page there so head on over and send us some love yeah Okay, so Exodus 21, the treatment of servants. What do you think they mean when they say that? Uh, Slaves. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, like, I'm wondering, are they going to stop raping them? Are they going to... I bet not. Yeah, right? I just bet not. Or... Call me a cynic. I don't don't know. Okay, here we go. These are the regulations you must present to Israel. If you buy a Hebrew slave... (laughs) This, and he said so it starts this, there. This guy's is shit. Yeah, yeah. If you buy a slave. Buy, yeah. If you buy a human being. Right, right. To belong to you. Yeah. As property. Like, that's the beginning of the sentence. Right. Okay, ready? Isn't, isn't all <laughs> human beings created equal under the eyes of God? Apparently, these people were not actually seen as people. So, only some people are people and other people are not people. And if you are on the wrong end of the stick, you can... I really don't like this God. I don't like this God either. It's very uh, not good. I don't agree with his uh, his uh, his take on people. No, no. He is gross. Yeah. Okay. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he may serve for no more than six years. Set him free in the seventh year and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. But oh, okay. There's so much right. wrong with that. Though. There, there, there really is because what's to stop somebody else from picking them up as a slave after that? Right. Because like he's sure he served his six years, but like to we're talking, you. we're talking about <laughs> two thousand years ago. Yeah. What you, do you have like a freaking ID card? ID card that says, "Oh, dude, I've already served my six years. I'm sorry." Right. And but anyway, like that's that's not even the first part of the problem. That's the getting past the part where you force somebody into slavery in the first goddamn right. place. Right, and then are they welcome in society after that six years, or, like, what happens? Like, do you pull out your laminated card? Or do you just be like, hey, dude, you need to go back to wherever you came from. I don't care if it's across the desert. Get the fuck out of here. Right? Bye. I mean, like, you know, what do they do? If he was single when he became your slave, he shall leave single. You will not be falling in love while you are in your six years of enslavement. Better keep it to your damn self. Sorry. Your phone is calendar. making noise. I didn't mean to. It was a calendar thing. I hate it. I'm sorry. Well, you got a hot date with somebody? No. Then why do you have a calendar going on? Because it's something you put in our calendar to pick up our daughter. Oh, all right. That's fair. Okay, but anyway, if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife must be freed with him. Well, that's rather magnanimous of them. So, like, if you're smart and you're a girl, Uh you're like, dude, how much time you got in? Yeah. Five and a half years? Dude, we need to get married, like, right now. No, he has, if he went in single, he's got to come out single. He can't get married while he's a slave. Oh, so they would become slaves together. Oh, okay. Yeah, if if he was... Wait, she would get out anyway. What does it matter if they're married or not? Because Because they both put the six years in, or does it only apply to male slaves? No, here's the thing. If you bought a slave and he was already married, then they both come in together and they'd be six years a slave together. Got it. But if he comes in and then two years into his enslavement, he marries somebody, that's not going to work. The maths are wrong because then he's done in four years, but she's still got, you know, she's starting her six years. I see. So they're basically just saying they can't get married. Yeah. Okay. To like cheat the system. Yeah. No, no doing that. The shitty slavery system right. but yeah. you know they yeah. can't cheat it no cheating when you're a slave i just the whole thing i just i can't even okay if his master gave him a wife while he was a slave and they had sons or daughters then only the man will be free in his seventh year what but his wife and children will still belong to his motherfucking master that's some bullshit. But the slave may declare, I love my master, my wife, and my children. I don't want to go free. So, if he does this, his master must present him before God. Then his master must take him to the door or doorpost and publicly pierce his ear with an awl. <laughs> what? After that, the slave will serve his master for life. That is such so, bullshit. So... He's giving his slave a wife. The wife has kids. 
at the end of dude's six years, he can either give up his wife and kids that were thrust upon him and get gone with his laminated plastic ID card. Yeah. Or, or he can be a slave for life with his wife and kids. That's crazy. Those are his options. That's crazy. That's fucked up. Yes, it really is. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting juicy. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of six years as the men are. Because, you know, she got pussy. I, why? If she does not satisfy her owner. Oh, my God. He must allow her to be bought back again. Jesus Christ. But he is not allowed to sell her to foreigners uh. since he is the one who broke the contract with her. What the fuck? But if the slave's owner arranges for her to marry his son, he may no longer treat her as a slave, but as a daughter. I mean, the fact alone that <laughs> slave ownership standards are in the fucking Bible right? is such utter bullshit. Like that alone. How do you even recognize this as a legitimate religion in this day and age Right. with that in the fucking Bible and say... That you have to follow God's word that's in the Bible. Right. That's right. fucking bullshit. If you want to say these things, then you have to believe the whole fucking thing. Right. And if you do, then fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. If a man who has married a slave wife takes another wife for himself, because, you know, polygamy is awesome if you're a man. Right. He must not neglect the rights of the first wife to food, clothing, and sexual intimacy. Mm. He still better fuck that bitch. Yeah. If he fails in any of these three obligations, she, the first wife, may leave as a free woman without making any payment. Hmm. Hmm. That's... Uh, there's just so much wrong with... Like, I don't even know where to start. I can't even... Like, I can't even criticize how... This rule doesn't work because the rule itself, the fact that somebody sat down and thought these rules. Okay. I have to say, the more we go through the Bible, the more I feel better about having started the podcast called Sacrilegious Discourse because. This is bullshit. It's bullshit. I hate it so much. Yes. Okay, we're still in the same chapter, but now we're in a new section. Laws concerning acts of violence. Okay. So, I bet rape's not covered. I bet rape's not covered. And or I if bet it is, are, it's very lenient. Yeah, and I bet here are the caveats for when you're allowed to murder. Right. I bet. Yeah. Anyone who assaults and kills another person must be put to death, period. Must be put to death. Assaults and kills. So mm -hmm. you can kill somebody as long as you didn't assault them. So like if you're defending yourself. No, if you assault them and then you kill them during your assault. Yeah. Then, That's what yeah. I'm saying. If you're defending yourself, you're fine. Because okay. assault means you're attacking them, right? right? So. Well, we're, we're not at self-defense. This is just the first sentence. Okay. If you assault somebody and you kill them during that assault, you're going to be put to death. Period. The end. Now I understand why so many Christians are for the death penalty. Right. Because it's right there in the Bible. Yeah. And we love murder, don't we? Along with slave ownership. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and rape. And yeah. incest and polygamy. Right. But if it was simply an accident permitted by God... I will appoint a place of refuge where the slayer can run for safety. What exactly constitute an accident permitted by God? Um, if it was an accident, that means God permitted it. Okay. Like, the fact that that you walk down the street and you trip, right? But who gets to judge that? Well, if it happened, then God wanted it to happen because God is a perfect God and only things that he wants to happen, happen. But obviously that's not true because people murder other people because they have rules for it right there. But that was them. If it's an accident. Right. But who's the, like, the, God doesn't come down and make judgment okay, on every murder because, that because, happens or every death. Like, let's say that there's a bunch of people watching, right? And uh -huh. they're like, no, this dude took it upon himself to assault that guy and kill him. Okay. Whereas this dude over here... All he did was fall down. That was clearly an accident. So you just have to hope you have a hundred million witnesses. Got it. Okay. But if it was simply an accident permitted by God, I will appoint a place of refuge where the slayer can run for safety. Run, slave, run. They're going to get you because you had an accident. Hmm. However, if someone deliberately kills another person, 
then the slayer must be dragged even from my altar and be put to death. So. Hmm. Oh, so they killed people at it at churches, basically. At church. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Not church. just like. It's where it's at. Yeah. Right. Like that's where all the action was happening. Yeah. Anyone who strikes father or mother must be put to death. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what it says right in the Bible. Your kid hits you and you have to kill him. Verse 15 right here. Anyone who strikes father or mother must be put to death. And is it just your father and mother or is this any mother and father out there? If you if you strike your mother or father. Okay. That That's crazy. I can't even yeah. like conceive of that. This is just getting me so hot and bothered. And besides, if... If my dad was a drunk and he deserved to get hit, then fuck that rule. That's right? fucking stupid. Right? Exactly. Which or, my dad wasn't a drunk, except for that one time at my brother's re- wedding. Oh my but, God. you know, that's a whole other story. I think that you're allowed to be drunk at somebody's wedding. <laughs> Especially if you're celebrating. He was celebrating. Right. Yeah. Because who would have thought your brother would get married? Ha <laughs> ha! Burn! <laughs> <laughs> Kidnappers must be put to death. Whether they are caught in possession of their victims or have already sold them as slaves. Damn. Kidnappers. Um, I mean. I'm okay with that one. <laughs> but to death? Like, I don't even really support death penalty for no, 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 capital no. murder. So Right. But you know, but in, in this world. In so far time, as we're judging these people, the level of who if they would, die. If these people were kidnapping a child, you can imagine what they were kidnapping that child for. Right. In which case, yeah. No. I, and, Go ahead yeah. and stone them while you're there. For sure. Anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death. Jesus Christ. You can't hit or dishonor them. Right. Right, right, right. And who... Wow. What is to say? What does dishonoring what mean? What is dishonor? That's a very fine... I bet if a woman goes out and shows her ankles, she has dishonored her family. Holy shit. I bet if she has long hair and she dares to brush it in public. Fuck this religion. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. I bet if a girl is pretty, she dishonors her family. Whatever. I bet if a girl is ugly, she dishonors her family. I bet if a boy rapes her, she's no longer a virgin and has dishonored her family. But I bet the boy's still okay. I bet boys never dishonor their families (laughs) because having a penis is the most awesome fucking thing on the planet. Right. Now suppose two men quarrel and one hits the other with a stone or fist and the injured person does not die but is confined to bed. So you just clocked him and knocked him out. Well, and maybe, like, put him in a coma or something. Right. I don't know. He's a, he's a fucking vegetable. Right. If he is later able to walk outside again, even with a crutch, the assailant will not be punished, but must compensate his victim for lost wages and provide for his full recovery. So you gotta... Uh, if you punch a guy, you knock him out, and he... he I mean, i kind of okay with that one, yeah, I guess. yeah. If a man beats his male or female slave with a club and the slave dies as a result, the owner must be punished. But how? It doesn't say. That's that's that's, a that's little, pretty vague. That's they definitely vague don't say put him to death. Right, right. And so you're just allowed to murder slaves. And we will talk and about we'll talk about that one. Maybe we'll cuss you out real good and yeah, and call we'll slap it your wrist real hard. Yeah, yeah. But if the slave recovers within a day or two, then the owner shall not be punished. Since the slave is his property. Oh, my God. I hate this book. I hate this book. Uh, I Before, I would try to be respectful of the Bible. Like, I would never, like, intentionally throw it across the room or, like, stand on it. But I'm good with burning it at this point, you? know what? You? If a Bible comes into my vision, you better hold on to it tight. Because I'm going to knock that shit to the ground. I think we ought to, like... Yeah, we got to burn Bibles. I hate the Bible. This is disgusting and despicable and I hate it. I I am on a mission. I am no Bibles will be in my sight. As a matter of fact, I think I have some Bibles in this house just like not because I buy Bibles and read them, but because, you know, in in your lifetime somebody might give you one and you're like, "Hey, thanks." I mean, Republicans burn Dixie Chicks albums for fucking you know, saying same, something same sort of bad were, about the, no. They just said that they were ashamed to be from the same state. That yeah, was it. that's it. That was it. But their their fucking Bible that they claim is their guiding light. Yeah, no, no is, Bible will be in my vision that does not get at least thrown to the ground, if not ripped in half. They'd probably try to like shoot us if they saw us burning the Bible. I don't give a fuck. This is no. This I'm just is, saying. I will die on this. I'm hill just saying. Now. Dixie chicks. It's okay for that minor thing. Yeah. But they talk about this shit. And they and and some hardcore 
Baptisty, whatever evangelical Christian would try to like hurt us if we they saw us burning the Bible. Well, yeah, but I mean, think about it like like um, Kaepernick wasn't even allowed to kneel peacefully, right? And they they wanted to rip him apart, you know. So yeah, if if the wrong person saw me assaulting a fucking Bible, I can imagine I would be in trouble. But you know what? That's a hill I'm willing to die on. I hate this book so, like, I am so, I'm angry. I am just livid. I am so mad. Right. You do not want to have a Bible in my sight at this point. And I'm going to go through the house, and if I have Bibles on my bookshelf, they are getting torn up, and I hate them. Yeah, I agree. This is gross, and I hate it. Now, suppose two men are fighting, and in the process, they accidentally strike a pregnant woman, so she gives birth prematurely. (laughs) Yeah, suppose. What? What? Just suppose. If no further injury results, the man who struck the woman must pay the amount of compensation the woman's husband demands and the judges approve. I demand a million billion trillion dollars because <laughs> you struck my belly and made me have a baby early. Right. Which is, you know, very likely to end up in future health problems. Right. So, fuck you. <laughs> Give me all your money. Yeah. But if there is further injury, the punishment must match the injury. A life for a life. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand, a foot for a foot, a burn for a burn, a wound for a wound, a bruise for a bruise. Now, they did say if it happened on accident. Mm. At the beginning, they did. Hold on. Suppose two men are fighting, and in the process, they accidentally strike a pregnant woman. Right. So she gives birth prematurely. That's what I'm saying. Well, they shouldn't have been fighting near a pregnant woman, goddammit. I, I mean, I agree, but to put him to death for accidentally hitting the pregnant woman? You know what? I'm not really right here right now wanting to defend anything in this despicable book. And I'm not very happy with men at the moment because of this book. So those men, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I would say they already got the tip of their dicks chopped off. They could get the rest chopped off too. All right. Whatever. Kay? You, if you made me have a miscarriage or a premature birth, you would really kill somebody for it. No, I would tell them to chop off their dick during those times. Not today, obviously, because today we have courts and, you know, you probably could get a million dollars from somebody. Right, right. Whatever. This, this whole thing, we're discussing a woman having birth early because two jackholes can't control their temper. Right. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Laws. Concerning responsibility of owners. Owners of slaves? I'm guessing. I can only guess. If a man hits his male or female slave in the eye and the eye is blinded, he must let the slave go free to compensate for the eye. If a man knocks out the tooth of his male or female slave, he must let the slave go free to compensate for the tooth. Hmm. If an ox gores a man or woman to death, the ox must be stoned. (laughs) Stoned? And its flesh may not be eaten. That'll that show that ox. doesn't even make any sense. That'll teach that ox to be an ox. It's obviously it, not the ox's fault. It, oxes are... Oxes it's an ox. are gonna ox. What do, you, what do you expect an ox to do? Not ox? Right. In such a case, however, the owner will not be held liable. But suppose the ox had a reputation for goring, and the owner had been informed, but failed to keep it under control. If the ox then kills someone, it must be stoned and the owner must also be put to death. Jesus. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, this is just oh, too much. I'm going to need you to sign a waiver before you handle my ox because yeah. I ain't going to fucking die over this shit. So. Right? right? <laughs> However, the dead person's relatives may accept payment to compensate for the loss of life. Oh, okay, okay. The owner of the ox may redeem his life by paying whatever is demanded. The same regulation applies if the ox gores a boy or girl. But if the ox gores a slave, either male or female, the animal's owner must pay the slave's owner 30 silver coins and the ox must be stoned. (laughs) Random and arbitrary and bullshit. (coughs) Suppose someone digs or uncovers a pit and fails to cover it. And then an ox or a donkey falls into it. Just suppose. Hate it when that happens. I do too, but just suppose. Yeah. Okay? okay. The owner of the pit must pay full compensation to the owner of the animal, but then he gets to keep the dead animal. Do you think they labeled their pits back then? 
What? Why would you keep a dead animal? I don't know. He gets to keep the dead animal. I don't know. Yay, I get to keep my dead animal. But I mean, how do they know whose pit it is? And were there just pits like everywhere? I can't even with this bullshit. (laughs) If someone's ox injures a neighbor's ox and the injured ox dies, then the two owners must sell the live ox and divide the price equally between them. Your ox killed my ox (laughs) and I only get half of the money for the ox that you sell. (laughs) Fuck that. I want all the money and also chop off your dick. (laughs) (laughs) they must also divide the dead animal but if the ox had a reputation for goring yet its owner failed to keep it under control he must pay the full compensation a live ox for the dead one but he may keep the dead ox the end so (laughs) so the bible is supposedly god's word right i'm I'm correct in assuming that right that's what everybody that's what i hear that's what i hear so god literally apparently dictated all this bullshit to mm-hmm. somebody yeah. 200 years after yeah. Jesus died or whatever. Yeah. Is that, or no, 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 this is the, this is the Old Testament. So this mm-hmm. is actually before Jesus was alive. So well, yeah. never mind. So yeah. So God like dictated this to somebody. Yeah. Okay. Or something. Or something. Yeah. I don't know all the ins and outs. That's over my pay grade. Okay. That was the end of the chapter. That though? was the end of that fucking chapter. Okay. That was, that was painful. There's more laws coming up. Holy shit. In Exodus 22, chapter 22. You know you got to stay tuned for this. <laughs> we'll see you guys in a second. Yeah. Are you ready for chapter 22? My husband asked me because I'm still so mad. Yes. Exodus chapter 22. Laws concerning restitution. Damn. I'm sorry. I'm still fucking irate. This book is not okay. If someone steals an ox or sheep... And then kills or sells it. The thief must pay back five oxen for each ox stolen and four sheep for each sheep stolen. If a thief is caught in the act of breaking into a house and is struck and killed in the process, the person who killed the thief is not guilty of murder. So there are exceptions to the assaulting and... Yeah. Okay. But if it happens in daylight, the one who killed the thief is guilty of motherfucking murder. Wait. So if you... if you try to steal in daylight and the owner tries to kill you, the owner, and does yeah, the owner of the house is the are one then in guilty of murder of murder yeah. So damn, if you break into my house, I'm gonna make sure that nobody finds your body till night. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a thief who is caught must pay in full for everything he stole. Goddamn right, he better. If he cannot pay, he must be sold as a slave. To pay for his theft. I mean, so essentially he's a slave because you wouldn't be stealing if you right. could afford to like, pay for it. I'm just it. thinking like, okay, wait, this just took a dark turn. Like, I'm not trying to like convict somebody into slavehood just because they were stealing. Like, okay, you broke into my house to steal. Were you stealing my TV or were you stealing bread? And if you were stealing my TV, is it because you're like selling it um, for drugs or, you know, for food for your children? Right. And then there's those stories of the kids that break into people's houses to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Right? Like, do they really deserve or, to get sold into slavery? No. Because <laughs> it was just a prank. Right? You know? Like, like, okay, I had a friend once when I was a kid who would, like, crawl out her window onto the roof. And then um, her roof was adjacent to her neighbor's roof. And so she would climb onto the neighbor's roof. Like, not climb so much as, like, just go onto yeah. her neighbor's roof. And then the window was open, and so she went into her neighbor's house. But <laughs> she was, like, I don't know, seven. And seven is stupid. Right. Like, kids are so stupid. Like, oh, this window's open? Yeah. And so she went in and was, like, playing with the toys. Oh, my God. Like, should that kid... Definitely that kid was in the wrong. And definitely yeah. maybe the parents should have, like, said, hey, so, yeah, don't go in other people's houses. Right. Like, I'm not saying that was a perfect scenario. Right. But does that kid need to get sold into slavery? No. No. If someone steals an ox or a donkey or a sheep and it is found in the thief's possession, then the thief must pay double the value of the stolen animal. If an animal is grazing in a field or vineyard and the owner lets it stray into someone else's field to graze, then the animal's owner must pay compensation from the best of his own grain or grapes. If you are burning thorn bushes and the fire gets out of control and spreads into another person's field, Destroying the sheaves or the uncut grain or the whole crop. 
the one who started the fire must pay for the lost crop. I mean, these seem somewhat these reasonable right. other than the selling thieves into slavery right. thing. Yeah, when you fuck up, you have to pay money. Yeah, right. okay, I'm down with that. Okay, um, let's see. Sorry, my phone just scrolled down. Okay, here we go. Suppose someone leaves money or goods with a neighbor for safekeeping and they are stolen from the neighbor's house. If the thief is caught, the compensation is double the value of what was stolen. But if the thief is not caught... The neighbor must appear before God who will determine if he stole the property. Oh, my God. So God will make an exception in this particular case. Or maybe God judges all of them. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. Like, let's say um, I have, like, way too many scrapbook supplies. So I'm like, sister, will you hold some of my scrapbook supplies for me? Because I don't have room and I'm going to rearrange my furniture and shit like that. And then... Um, you know, I'll come get it when I have made room for them. And then, so while my scrapbooking shit is over at my sister's house and then somebody breaks into her house and steals it, but we don't know who it was or where that shit went, then right. she has to go before God to see if she's guilty or of stealing it or not. Right. Right. That's crazy. Right. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I hate this book. Suppose there is a dispute between two people who both claim to own a particular ox, donkey, sheep, article of clothing, or any lost property. This goes to your question of whether they put um, name tags on their animals. Mm, okay. Both parties must come before God, and the person whom God declares guilty must pay double compensation to the other. I want to know what this come appear before God thing entails. Like, is it like the honor system? Because these people have no honor. So how does that work? What does it mean come before God? I don't know. And I how mean, does God communicate? You have to keep in mind that they, they see God as a real entity that really does appear on Mount Sinai and stuff. And, so where know. do they go? Like, I want to know the logistics of this. Do they go to a place? They probably don't climb the steps of the house of God and they don't have their underwear looked at. Right. And they go and they testify in front of a, you know, priest or something. So the priest and, speaks for God or something? Yeah. I mean, then, that, that would be my guess. And then supposedly... And then maybe they burn something, like a live animal, to like, you know... Like, drown a witch, and if she floats, then... Oops. Right. And maybe murder a slave. I'm not really sure. But then, then the answer becomes clear. Okay. At that point. So, it's like reading tea leaves in the bottom of your Probably. cup? I mean, slave blood oh and God. oxen blood and, and truth and not truth. I hate this You book. know? I don't know. Now, suppose someone leaves a donkey, ox, sheep, or any other animal with a neighbor for safekeeping, but it dies or is injured or is taken away, and no one sees what happened. Boom, boom, boom. The neighbor must then take an oath in the presence of the Lord. If the Lord confirms that the neighbor did not steal the property, the owner must accept the verdict, and no payment will be required. An oath. An and oath. God is going to confirm it. Via some method. what? That part is not explained. The... See, the instructions here are real sketchy. Yeah. But if the animal was indeed stolen, the guilty person must pay compensation to the owner. If it was torn to pieces by a wild animal, the remains of the carcass must be shown as evidence. Ew. And no compensation will be required. Ooh. Sorry about your goat, man. <laughs> if someone borrows an animal... Can I borrow your animal? <laughs> if someone borrows an animal from a neighbor and it is injured or dies when the owner is absent... The person who borrowed it must pay full compensation. But if the owner was present, no compensation is required. And no compensation is required if the animal was rented. For this loss is covered by the rental fee. Man, it's a good thing that God covers rental fees in, <laughs> right? uh, in the Bible. <laughs> who would have thought that God gave a shit about rentals? Yeah. I mean, this seems so, pretty petty shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next section. Laws of human relations. Mm. You know what they mean by relations. Yes. Bow, wow. If a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged to anyone and has sex with her, he must pay the customary bride price and marry her. <laughs> so if you rape a girl, you got to marry that bitch. <laughs> But if her father refuses to let him marry her, the man must still pay him an amount equal to the pri bride price of a virgin. What the fuck is that price? Whatever the bride price of a virgin is. Oh, okay. You must not allow a sorceress to live. Okay, <laughs> we're done with. You must not allow a sorceress to live? That's the whole kill a witch. Don't Witches okay. are not allowed to... But did we cover anywhere in the Bible yet that there are sorceresses? No, but apparently there are. Now there are. Okay. Yeah. 
All Thou right. shalt not suffer a witch but to But Moses live. can like turn things into snakes and he is a and all kinds of shit. And he's good. He's just God's, you know, spokesman. God said But so. a woman, she's going to be a sorceress. Specifically, it says yeah. sorceress. Well, a sorcerer. Think about think about this though. Um, this is one um, translation. The actual phrase that I've always heard is "Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live." Got it. And so, sorceress, witch, like I think it's still that, a female connotation I of think whatever that it is. What, however, it was originally written, I don't know, but I think that men over time have definitely, definitely all agreed that women are bitches. And that they right. better not and have And that's magic. essentially where it all stemmed from yeah. for the last yeah. 3,000 years yeah. or whatever. So I, I'm i not here to say that this was directed specifically at women originally, but is definitely directed at women now. <sighs> yeah. Anyone who has sexual relations with an animal must certainly be put to death. <laughs> certainly. Put to death? Put to death. Jesus Do Christ. not fuck my goat. I will kill you. I mean, I don't agree with anybody doing that, but like... Maybe some mental health and, like, I don't, you know, counseling and shit. Like, I can't even wrap my brain around it, so I'm not here to kink shame like, anyone. You no, know, you shouldn't kill you them shouldn't, over it, maybe. You shouldn't fuck a goat, because that hurts a goat, you know? Right. Goats didn't ask to be fucked by some dude's dick. Right. But, yeah, having said that, I don't think that the guy needs to be killed. He needs we, help. We need to figure out why he got to fuck a goat. Right. Yeah, that's disturbing. I don't know. Some people, I mean, some people like feet, like there's feet fetishes, like people like weird things. Not, sorry, that, that's the wrong adjective. I don't mean to say weird things. Like unique things. They like things that are beyond what one might consider normal. Right. So again, I'm not here to kink shame. Different things get different people off. So I don't really feel qualified to comment on that other than. But once you go to a goat, you might think about taking a step back from. Yeah, you know, where you're yeah. at there. I'm not saying that um, you shouldn't get turned on by animals because who, what do I know? Right. But I do feel sorry for the animal on the receiving end. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Let's move on from this okay. image, huh? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm trying to be sensitive yeah. because, you know, this is a sensitive times. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyone who sacrifices to any god other than the Lord must be destroyed. There's yeah. those other gods again. Other gods, yeah. You must not mistreat or oppress foreigners in any way. Remember, you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. Like all the fucking time. Yeah. They were foreigners everywhere because God kept going, hey, go here, go there, go now, be a foreigner. This this particular verse is one is a verse that um, people who um, are... What do I want to say? Like contemporary Christians, like the ones that are hip and cool, not the like evangelists that are assholes. Okay. This is what they, the verse that they use when they're trying to say, you know, that immigrants should be allowed into this country because we were all, you yourself were once foreigners in yeah. the land. You no, know that what I'm makes saying? sense. Except yeah. for that it's in the same um, chapter as all the other stuff as all this other stupid right shit. right i'm just saying like it's it's a good verse to pluck out yeah. if you're trying to say something good no, I, I like that yeah you must not exploit a widow or an orphan sure sure i'm sorry that has to be spelled out if you exploit them in any way and they cry out to me then i will certainly hear their cry certainly he will and, certainly and what will happen my anger will blaze against you and i will kill you with the sword jesus then your wives will be widows and your children fatherless. What the fuck? He gets angry about some weird shit. I mean, is it weird? It it was unexpected where it fell, but I mean, is it weird that I he's agree. like you shouldn't don't take advantage fuck of with women, or orphans, widows, and orphans, but like kill somebody? Oh, excuse me, I'm not drunk. I swear. <laughs> you. <laughs> You're so taken aback that you you got drunk on <laughs> this horribleness and hiccups. I love it. If you lend money to any of my people who are in need, do not charge interest as a money lender would. <laughs> oh, I see. I like that one. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe you should be this drunk. Yeah. <laughs> if you take your neighbor's cloak as security for a loan, you must return it before sunset. This coat may be the only blanket your neighbor has. How can a person sleep without it? 
Wait. They're talking about collateral here. Yeah, but you got to return it for sunset, so then what good is it as collateral? Just for the day. Uh, this is a okay. short lo- short term loan. <laughs> it's it's a day loan. Okay, I guess. If maybe. you do not return it and your neighbor cries out to me for help, then I will hear for I am merciful. Does does he seem very merciful? No, he seems like a fucking dick. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. You must not dishonor God or curse any of your rulers. You must not hold anything back when you give me offerings from your crops and your wine. Does that I sound... don't even know what that fucking means. That means don't be stingy. Give me everything. <laughs> right. Give me what are you supposed to do? all of everything. You must give me your firstborn sons. You must also give me the firstborn of your cattle, sheep, and goats. Give me your firstborn sons. The fuck? But leave the newborn animal with its mother for seven days. Then give it to me on the eighth day. You must be my holy people. Therefore, do not eat any animal that has been torn up and killed by wild animals. Throw it to the dogs. The end. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I don't understand why we're going over laws, but okay. These laws, some of them are like, you had to spell that out, huh? And then other ones are like, random much? And then other ones are like, are you even fucking kidding me? Right. I just... I hate the Bible. That's all. Yeah. I'm beyond God is a dick and I'm at I really fucking hate the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's stupid shit. Yep. All right. Well, let's find out what else is stupid next uh next week, huh? Yeah, next week or yeah, next week will be Exodus chapters 23 and 24. All right, guys. We'll see you then. Bye. Husband. Yes, wife. Um, is there a way for people to contact us? Well, sure. They can uh, get on our Twitter account. We have a Twitter account? We do. What is it? It is sacrilegious underscore D. Like D for discourse? Yeah, they wouldn't let me put the whole thing, so I had to shorten it to underscore D. I hate them. Yeah, that's disgusting. How do you spell sacrilegious? Do you know? I don't want to. Just look it up in a <laughs> dictionary or something. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do that right now. You know why? Sacrilegious you, underscore D, okay? Because you messed it up and I made you fix it. That's why. Yeah, yeah. What about an email? Yeah, we got that too. What Sac- is it? Sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. Oh, well, that's easy. Yeah. As long as you know how to spell sacrilegious. Right. Well, definitely get a hold of us. Let us know what you th- thought of the episode and, you know, any comments, hate mail. We love that kind of stuff. Also, you could answer some questions that we leave throughout or, like, correct my pronunciation. Yeah, are probably please. probably bad, wrong, and horrible. Because we suck sometimes. Absolutely! Oh, also, you know, if you like this shit or whatnot, um, like, give us a like on your podcasting app and stuff or even leave a comment or something. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Goodbye. Okay,